So back in the Mercedes GL 450 with the no AC complaint. So the owner, he got another control board from the junkyard, plugged it in and said, hey, it's still not blowing cold. What the heck? I'm like, bring it over. We'll do a follow-up diagnosis. No extra charge. Now we got some parts to play with. He brought the old AC compressor with him this time. So let's get to the bottom of this. So with the AC compressor plugged in, um, I tried, you know, the new controller and or the replacement junkyard controller. It's actually three years older. You can see the timestamp on here is uh, 05, 08, 09. So it's older. And this one couldn't even turn on a 500 milliamp light bulb. The original controller can do that no problem. It doesn't mind the light bulbs up to 800 milliamps. We proved that yesterday. One amp, it says too much, too much current. Now, when you plug in the AC compressor, neither controller turns them on. So now with the original controller and the new AC compressor, let's see what it does on the oscilloscope. So I'm measuring the voltage and the current on the control wire going to the compressor. So here we go. Turn it on. Try one, try two, try three, and then it sets PWM output, the same code. Okay, what the heck is going on here? So when it tries to turn on the compressor, we see that A, there's no, absolutely no current being passed on this wire. Zero. And there are voltage spikes. So it commands a current, goes up to 12 volts, and then shuts off the pulse. And look at this back, back feed voltage. It's minus 16 volts. That does not happen when we just have a light bulb because this little valve in the compressor it's an inductor to coil, so you get a little current, and then you t shut off the current, and then it backfeeds this voltage. So is, is this what the controller is fussing about? It's definitely not overcurrenting, it's just saying short circuit. Let's plug in the light bulbs instead of the controller, and I'll show you the difference uh, of, of the signal here. Alright, so now compressor is unplugged. Let's see what the controller does. Roll the scope. Beautiful, and on the scanner we see that the command ramps up to 100. No problems at all. Okay. And if we back up one screen, these are the pulses from 0 to 12 volts. Now you see there's no load, so they're kind of sawtooth. So I'll save this, and then we can plug in a light bulb and see what it does. All right, so now I have a pair of light bulbs. This is one amp, so I expect the controller will not be able to turn these on. We know 800 milliamps is the limit, but let's try it anyways. And try one, try two, try three. Okay. So for a light bulb, the initial current here is going up towards 4 amps and that's probably why the controller is fussing. But you can see the pulses are nice, the current is goes up to 4 amps, no problem, no back voltage. Third experiment, let's do 800 milliamps and I'll show you the bulbs light up. So I took one of the bulbs out, this is half an amp. Okay, the bulb light up, is lighting up. It's happy, 100%. Key off. So our amperage here is about 500 or 50 millivolts, which is about half an amp. And it was happy. Okay, this is with the old controller. Initial amperage 
was two and a half amps, this is when the filament was heating up. Totally happy. So, what is the controller not like about the AC compressor versus the light bulb? I think it's that those back voltage spikes, there might, I don't know if there's supposed to be a diode in the wire to prevent the back voltage spikes, perhaps. Uh, the original compressor is right here. Now, it does have a Mercedes sticker on it. It's a Denso. Looks, you know, I don't know if there's a date stamp on it or not. But the wiring, you know, two wires coming in from here, and only one going to this connector. You see there's an empty pin. And it's just grounded on the body of the connector, or the compressor. So my question is, is this original? Is this reman? Because on the, all the wiring diagrams, a the con, the wire goes, you know, the ground wire goes through this connector to the harness of the car. And is there a diode somewhere where it's not shown on the diagram? You know, maybe this valve has something built in where the aftermarket or reman compressors don't have. So. How can we fix this air conditioning system without any extra parts knowing the information that you know we have at the moment? All right, in my old Radio Shack stash, I found epoxy rectifier diodes. Look at these guys. So three amps, 50 volt peak, I'm guessing. Uh, what if we put this in line with that AC control wire? Would that work? Would it make the controller happy? And could it actually turn on this air, compre air conditioning compressor? Pretty easy to try. Let's put one in. We've got to make sure that the polarity is correct. We can bench test it and see if that works. All right, bench testing this diode. So, test light from battery positive for my bench power supply. If I touch it here, test light lights up. 0.2 amps, that's correct. If we reverse the polarity, put the negative on this side, test light will not light up. Okay, so we want the current going towards the stripe. Let's try it out. Alright, so how do we get rid of these negative voltage spikes? A diode is the right idea, but you have to hook it up correctly. For example, how does a rectifier work in an alternator? When, you know, there's an AC wave and you want to rectify it so it's DC. So you want a diode that goes from ground to the control wire, so when there's a negative spike, it actually, there's current flowing from ground through the diode to cancel out that negative voltage spike. So that's what I have rigged up here. Same diode. So the black lead is a ground and the yellow lead goes to our control wire. And the control wire, I'm measuring it with the oscilloscope and this red lead, I'm measuring the current on it, that's going to the AC compressor. Okay, so let's roll the scope, fire it up, Dang it! Still negative voltage spikes. What the heck? How do you explain that? Alright, let's try again. My lead was actually desoldered from the banana jack in there, so that was not a good experiment. Alright, here we go. Hey, hey, hey! Here we go, let's see if it can handle this one amp of current long term and pulse it down. Let me turn the scanner back on. We're getting cold air. This is promising. This is promising. Just with this diode from ground to the control wire. That might be the right combination here. Let me log in, clear out all the codes, look at the live data, and we'll just let the AC run and see what happens. 
All right, now the AC compressor is being commanded at a lower duty cycle, and we still have it's still on. We have a good current, 81. So it's about 800 milliamps. Blowing ice cold air. This might be the final solution here. All right, codes are cleared. Look at that. Request the AC compressor up to 100%. Refrigerant pressure is going up. Let's see what the evaporator temperature drops down to. That's it. This Mercedes is fixed with one diode. Those were the only parts that were required. Now, how did it work from the factory? That's my question. Is there a diode burnt out in the controller? Is the AC compressor a reman OEM unit that doesn't have a diode in it? Something like that, but obviously the controller needs to see no back voltage spikes. It's not happy with the voltage spikes. And the diode took care of that, and it's happily carrying that one amp of current. Let's measure that. Well, right now it's duty cycle, it's about 57%. But if we push the AC rest button, Okay, so once it cools down, it won't go to 100%, but no glitches at all. Ice cold air, we're down to 34 degrees on the evaporator. That's it, amazing. Nothing else to do, so we'll reconnect the compressor, and then this diode will permanently install between the control wire here and a convenient ground. Just splice it in, wrap it up, no one will ever know it's there. Amazing. Alright, so we just need to find a known good ground and a connector D, it's a two pin, it's a fat brown wire. Here it is, I have it back probed and I'm just checking that yes indeed it is a good ground. Test light from battery positive. So, now, everything's connected OEM. We're just jumping from the compressor control wire to ground through that diode. And the current is going from ground to the control wire to cancel out the negative spikes. Let's make sure this works. And then we'll make it permanent. Just solder in that diode. So, let's see, key on. Yep, compressor's ramping up. Oh, I don't have my current clamp connected. We can do that right here on the control wire. There's our current. Let's try again. Current ramps up nicely, nice and slow, until it gets to full 100%. Maximum current is about one amp. 80% request. Evaporator temperature is dropping. Car is happy. So, all we need to do is just place in that diode between these two wires. Give the customer a call, give them the good news. So, all OEM, no switches or relays needed, just a diode to suppress the negative voltage spikes to make this HVAC controller happy. That was a cool diagnosis. A lot of variables, and as you can see, first time around it didn't use the scope, didn't exactly know why the controller wasn't happy. With the oscilloscope, it's clear as day, you need an oscilloscope for any varying signal, you need an oscilloscope. No questions, <laughs> just get one. It'll make your life so much easier, and you can actually guarantee your diagnostics without firing the parts cannon. Um, so that's it for this one. I'll give you an after shot of the diode soldered in. Everything's back together. This car is ready for a road trip. Alright, so to 
to solder in a component into a wire without cutting the wire, use the strippers and just pull the insulation until you expose some copper. So I did that here and also on the signal wire, the purple wire, it's a little thinner, it's a thinner gauge. Pull that insulation back. Now, make sure this is going the right way. We want to go from ground to the control wire to cancel out those voltage spikes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the diode around the wire so it stays there and touches the copper. Kind of like that. And we'll just solder it right there. And then we'll do the same thing on the ground side. Pretty straightforward. Now this is a pretty thick so you want to kind of make a hook on it. Let me solder that on. Do the second wire. Make sure it works and wrap it up. Alright, so I got the diode soldered from ground to the control wire. Let's fire up the car and look at the live data. Alright, here we go. Compressor definitely engaged. Evaporator temperature is dropping. Fans kicking on. Sweet. And that's it. So all we have to do is wrap this up, reassemble the dash. This thing should be good to go. Owner's gonna be very excited. Okay, now it's limiting the reducing the duty cycle. Perfect. Bonus footage, so I have it in automatic mode at 68 degrees. And you can see on scan data, AC compressor is happy at 40% duty cycle. Our evaporator temperature is 35 degrees. It's ice cold. Almost no parts required, just a few brain cells. All right, let's catch you in the next one. Bye bye.